Hi, it's Mr. Anderson, and this is a mini lesson on engaging in argumentation from evidence, level two, evaluating arguments. The icon for argumentation is two people, and the reason why is a lot of the time an argument takes two people. And so we're gonna do one of those in this video. We'll give you an argument that's been created by a student. That argument is tied to a question, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna evaluate that. So the first thing when you're evaluating an argument is you always wanna define what is the question that they're actually trying to answer. That'll help us get closer to evaluation. The next thing you wanna do is you wanna kinda of lay out their argument that they've made. Remember, an argument has three portions. It's got the claim, which is an answer to a question. It's got the evidence that they're putting forward in their argument, and then it's got their reasoning. And so once you've identified the question, then you identify their argument or the elements of the argument. And then finally, you're gonna evaluate their argument. What can you evaluate? Any of these three parts you can evaluate. So their claim, their evidence, or their reasoning. So after watching this video, you should be able to evaluate arguments that are given from students around questions like bounty and the, are they absorbent or not? Or where do the materials in a plant come from? We're gonna start by doing a argument around these three types of fish, and then you'll have a chance to do the same thing with this uh, blue pyramid. And so let me clean this up and then we'll get started. Okay, so what we have here is an argument. This is an argument by a student. And so what I'll do is we're gonna start reading it. And then as we read it, we'll start to identify what is the question that they're trying to answer. And so if I start with the first sentence, it says, the clownfish, jellyfish, and starfish are all types of fish. And so what are they trying to answer? What's the question that they're trying to answer? So the question that they're trying to answer is, are all these animals, so the clownfish, the jellyfish, and the starfish, are they all fish? So that's the question that they're trying to answer. So if I continue on, you can see they've answered that question. The clownfish, jellyfish, and starfish are all types of fish. They include the word fish in their name, and you can see on the cards that they all live in water. My pet goldfish, Frank, lives in water, and I know he is a fish. Anything that lives in water and moves is a fish. Also, no one would ever name something fish if it wasn't a fish. And so the first thing to do is identify the question, and then we want to pull out what is their claim, what is their evidence, and what is their reasoning. How do you tell what's what? Well, the claim's easy. It's just an answer to the question. The evidence are going to be all the observations. These are the facts that they're laying forward in their argument, and then the reasoning will be a logical connection. So for me, a lot of the time, the way I do this is I'll highlight the different parts of it. And so what I've done is highlight the parts of it. You can see the yellow part is the claim, the blue part is going to be the evidence, things like they have fish in their name or they live in the water, and then this is going to be the reasoning down at the bottom. So anything that lives in water or moves is a fish. So a lot of that, like because, is going to be their reasoning. So what I want to do is just lay out the argument of the student, and I'll just put it up here, and then we'll kind of evaluate that. Okay, so the claim they're making is they're all fish, and then this is some of the evidence. They said the word fish is in each name, they all live in water, and Frank lives in water, and he is a fish. And so these are all things that they're building their argument on, their observations, like seeing the word fish, or seeing that they live in water, or seeing their fish. The next thing I'm gonna do is kind of list out the reasoning that goes with that evidence. So the first, when they're using this evidence of the fish is, is found in each name, they then say no one would ever name something fish if it wasn't a fish. And so their reasoning is that the names are always accurate. Whatever it says in the name tells you if it's a fish or not. And then these other two about them living in water or Frank living in water, what they're trying to say to the student is if it lives in water and moves, then it is a fish. And so this is kind of their because or their reasoning. And so as we evaluate this, it's really important to pull out the different parts of it. And then you can say, um, do I agree with the claim? Is it the evidence where I have a problem? Or is it where the reasoning is? And I think one of the things that would make this really hard or for anybody to try to write an argument with these fish is that we have to have a good definition. And so we have to have a definition 
for what a fish is. And so a fish would help us. And a lot of arguments can kind of, kind of be solved by just defining the terms that are going to be in the question. And so if I read the definition of a fish, that might help you figure out which of these are fish. So a fish is a group of aquatic vertebrates. That means they live in water and they have a backbone. They're characterized by their ability to breathe through gills the presence of fins for locomotion and balance, and in most cases, their bodies are covered with scales. And so a definition for fish is that they have to live in water, have a backbone, they have gills, they have fins, and then they have to have scales. And so evidence would be really important. So if we were to do a little research on each of these animals, what we would find is that the clownfish has all five of those, uh, and the jellyfish and the starfish only live in water. And so if the student that wrote the argument had this evidence, it would have helped them a little bit. But what I'm going to do now is based on this new evidence, I'm going to try to rewrite an argument that answers these questions. So where is most of the evidence? They're missing evidence related to these other characteristics of a fish. So let me write out an argument that might answer this question. Okay, so here's the argument I would lay forward. The first one, remember an argument is, written, is read from left to right. I would say the clownfish is a fish. The clownfish lives in water, they have a backbone, they have gills, fins, and scales. Um, since the clownfish satisfies all five criteria of a fish, the clownfish is a fish. Um, if we think about the starfish and the jellyfish, the starfish and the jellyfish are not fish. They don't have a backbone. They don't have gills, fins, or scales. These animals don't satisfy four of the five criteria of fish. Therefore, the starfish and the jellyfish are not fish. And so when you're evaluating an argument, the first thing you want to do is identify the question that the student is trying to answer, what's their claim evidence reasoning, and then what you want to do is evaluate the evidence. In this case, both the definition that was included in the question and this additional evidence was helpful. Um, some of that may come from you and sometimes it come from another source. And so what I want to do is clean all this up and then you'll have a chance to evaluate a argument as well. Okay, for the second one, I have a, another argument. If I read the argument, I've been looking at this shape and reading the definition and I'm pretty sure that this is a platonic solid. Shape has five faces, all of them are polygons. It also has an overall regular shape. I've seen similar shapes in Egyptian pyramids. Since this meets the criteria for the definition for a platonic solid, it is a platonic solid. And so what I'd encourage you to do, here's a definition for a platonic solid, is to pause the video and then evaluate the argument. First come up with their question, claim evidence reasoning, and then unpause the video and then you can take a look. So if you want me to highlight it, I'll include a link to that down below, but good luck. Okay, so the first thing I would do is I want to make sure that I understand the question that they're asking. And I, I think I get this right away at the beginning. It says, I'm pretty sure that this is a platonic solid. So you can see that in their claim. And so let me write down the question. So this is the question they're trying to answer. They're just trying to figure out if this is a platonic solid or not. Uh, the first thing I would do is write down their claim. Next thing I would do is list their evidence. Evidence is going to be things that they notice or observe or facts or information that they're putting forward. So let me write that down. Okay, so as I look and evaluate their argument, they've definitely made a claim. Uh, they're using evidence. They're saying that there are po five polygon faces. There definitely are five faces on there. They also said it's a regular shape like the Egyptian pyramids. That's a little bit of weird evidence. And then they've got reasoning. So the reasoning is that it fits the criteria for a platonic solid. So a platonic solid, if we define what it is, 
A platonic solid is a group of three-dimensional shapes where each face is the same regular polygon and the same number of polygons meet at each vertex. And so a lot of the parts of the definition they're not really getting to. And so the regular part, I think they're talking about a regular polygon. And so if I were to evaluate this, I would say, I think we need a little bit more evidence to really make this claim that it fits the criteria. And so it all turns, just like the fish example, it turns on the definitions for what a platonic solid is. And so if we were to look at that, platonic solid has to have all faces the same regular polygons. So that means we really have to know what a regular polygon is. So a regular polygon is going to be a polygon where all angles and all sides are equal. And if you don't even know what a uh, polygon is, that's going to be a closed shape with straight sides. And so I would say that this right here would be a polygon, but I wouldn't say that it is a regular polygon because not all the sides are equal. And so at this point, I would say I think they're missing some, especially evidence related to um, the polygons, because I see different polygons here, and also the number meeting at each vertex. And so what I would do now is rewrite this argument. So let me do that. Okay, so if we look at my argument, what I would say is no, this is not a platonic solid. Um, the bottom is square and the sides are triangles. And a platonic solid must have all faces be the same regular polygons. And so this square and the triangle are different. I would say the square is probably a regular polygon, but the triangle is not because it has different sides. And then if we look at the second strand of, of reasoning, um, the evidence is that there are four faces that are meeting at the top vertex, and then there's only three faces that are meeting at the bottom vertex. And according to the definition of a platonic solid, it has to be the same number that are meeting at each vertex. And so as I read the argument from left to right, it's no, I have two lines of evidence, and then I have two bits of reasoning, so I would say this is not a platonic solid. What might be a platonic solid? Maybe a cube, because it'd be a square on all sides and the same meeting at each side. And so as you're evaluating someone's argument, the first thing that you want to do is always figure out what question are they really trying to answer, what's their claim, evidence and reasoning, and then you can see lots of times the definition or additional evidence that you can gather is going to help you evaluate that argument. And again, it's not a fight, it's just looking at the evidence and the reasoning and see if we can convince somebody of the answer to a question. So now that you've done that, what I would encourage you to do is try that again. I've got another couple of arguments. The first one comes on the uh, role of bounty paper towels. They make a claim with a little bit of reasoning about their towels, so you could evaluate that. Or you could look at another student evaluation on plants and where that material in a plant is coming from. So that's how you evaluate arguments. It's really fun once you learn how to do it, and I hope that's helpful.